Hey guys, this is No Gym Needed, and I'm happy to bring you part 9 of What If Cell Didn't Fight the Z Fighters. So guys, as you see, I've taken a little break. Well, I got some reasons for that. One is you have to have motivation to do anything. Everyone knows that. Well, my most popular video on YouTube, What If Bulma Found Goku First Part 1, totally broke. I was sure it was YouTube's fault. I complained to YouTube and then started working again. Of course, it got a, a good amount of dislikes in the meantime while it wasn't working. Finally, someone commented and let me know about it. And well, anyways, it's back to being normal, so I got a little more motivation from that. And yeah, so I've also been totally addicted to solo leveling. It's so awesome. It's the definition of an epic story. And of course, for me to bring you good stories and be a good storyteller, I myself need to immerse myself in something great, something epic, so that I can be motivated to bring you guys these awesome what ifs. And of course, your guys' comments and fan fiction things you write in the comment really motivates me as well and gives me a lot of creativity and ideas. The other thing was the last uh, what if I did was super awesome. It's time paradox. What if Gohan Masters Zaru part 9? And it got like less than 200 views and it's been like what two or three weeks since I uploaded that? That's kind of like okay. I thought it would get a couple more views than that. So I guess I only have about 200 actual watchers out there um, yeah so you need motivation that's all there is to it I've seen other what-ifs and uh, I don't know I don't think they're as high quality as mine they don't put as much heart definitely don't put as much heart into theirs as I do to mine so I think I deserve a couple more views so please guys if you do like my videos Please just share them with someone else who likes Dragon Ball. That's the best thing you could do for me, and that'll help me get motivated. Also, if you think about it, if I'm not getting any views on these, then I'm still going to make them because it's a hobby, but as far as my list of priorities go, what ifs are not going to be at the top of my priority list. But if I get some more views, then yeah, they'll move up on my list. I mean, think about it, I have a life, I have two jobs, I got friends, I have to do chores around the house, I have a wife, family, I exercise and have other hobbies as well. So yeah, I have to make my priorities straight. And if I'm getting no views, realistically, I'm not going to make these every single day or every single week. So guys, that's about it. Um, Let's get into this. This is going to be an awesome part. I know you guys saw that thumbnail and you're interested as to what's going on there. Well, let's get right into it. Braille steps in to fight. They go Super Saiyan, but Omega Zalama just laughs and brushes them off. Then Zalama flies in and starts pulverizing Braille. Were we too naive? Beerus states. No, I didn't retrieve those two for nothing. We says, Two? Beerus asks. Who else did you bring? It seems Brawly's more than just a powerful being. He also has tender feelings and affections. I brought his wife, Chile-san, too. He's also fighting for the one who won't leave his side, We states. Finally, Omega says, Let's finish this. It's time to die. But then Caulifla and Chile stand in front of Braille. Back off! We won't let you hurt him anymore. Like that means anything to me. Unfazed, Omega flies toward them. Caulifla starts to feel the tingles in her back. Chile closes her eyes, chanting a fervent prayer for Brawly's safety, not even thinking of herself at all. What's this? Omega shouts, then stops. Caulifla says, what in the? Turning around, she realizes the tingles she felt weren't from her. It's Braille in Legendary Saiyan. He steps in between Chile and Caulifla. 
letting his left and right hand rest on each of their shoulders. What would I do if either of you got hurt? Braille says. At that moment, Kale and Brawley's strong emotions finally catch up to the legendary bodily fusion, and a light envelops them. What's going on? Goku asks as his heart starts to race a bit. This never happened to me and Vegeta. That's because you two's bodies and minds linked, but your heart and emotions didn't. This is what you'd call a perfect fusion, Whis states. Whis continues, If you can reach this state, the fusion will last longer, and the fighter's power will increase dramatically, even beyond the initial fusing. With a roar, legendary Braille flies toward Omega, decking him with his full power, sending him flying. Echoing throughout the void, Braille speaks and states his intention. An Omega attack for an Omega opponent. Imperial Eraser Cannon. Omega goes to dodge, but his key got disrupted from Kaioken, one of the drawbacks. And at the same time, Cell uses telekinesis to hold him down. While Goku and Vegeta go into Super Saiyan God and use energy grappling on Omega Zalama so that he can't move. He takes the full hit of Braille's attack. The stage they were fighting on, everything is gone. They have to fly. There's nothing left but void. Omega took massive damage. Braille states, I hope that did it. I put everything into that one attack. Then Vegeta chimes in. Where'd he go? If we don't see the Super Dragon Balls, it means he's still alive. He's hiding in the void, concealing his presence, Whis says. Whis, can't you check your staff? Beerus says. No need, Cell interjects. Echolocation, is it? Piccolo says. You Namekians truly have some good ears, huh? Yep, Piccolo says, proud of himself for noticing. He's 5,000 kilometers south-southwest from here, Cell announces. All right, let's hurry and go beat this guy. I'm getting hungry, Goku shouts excitedly. Whis takes them over. Well, when they arrive, they find Omega Zalama just gathering his energy. You've come to kill me? He says, it's kill or be killed. We don't really have a choice. And you've even killed your own companions. Don't start complaining now, Cell says. Complain? <laughs> no. Actually, I've just about healed the damage and reached my peak level with the Super Dragon Ball's effect. The only ones dying here are you guys, Omega confidently states. Cell. Cell. Who's there? Cell replies with a surprised voice. Cell, draw out your true power, and no enemy stands a chance, the voice says. But before Cell has time to question the disembodied voice, a chill runs down his spine as the saliva falls down his dry throat. Me? Get a chill? He thinks before realizing exactly what caused it. Standing before him is the Llama Omega, cloaked, no, decked out, in a razor-sharp aura, filled with pure, murderous intent. What's more is, that's Ultra Instinct? Why don't you call me Omega Ultra, the Llama says with a scarily confident grin. Then Vegeta laughs, <laughs> and then the Llama Omega, hearing him, says, why don't you humor me before you die, Vegeta? What's so funny in this situation? Omega Ultra says, I was just thinking, if a toad could smile, surely it'd look like a beautiful thing when compared to the one on your ugly mug. Omega snaps, but Vegeta has no intention of losing or dying. Right as Omega lands a punch, it it missed? Vegeta disappears, and instead, a little to the left, Vegito appears, instantly powers up to blue, 
and begins engaging Omega Ultra Zalama. Sell, 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 sell. What are all these voices? Cell thinks. Then, an unmistakably deep voice. Cell, call on them. They want to help you. Zalama? Who are them? Cell calls Longel over and tells him what he's experiencing. Longel forms a sober expression and recalls if there was anything written in the Book of Lore or their or oral tradition about what he's experiencing right now. Then a smile replaces the look on his face. Meanwhile, this is it, this is it, I have to keep this pace, Vegito says. While Vegito was fighting, he went to the next level without fully realizing it. He was in blue evolution. But what he was perceiving wasn't something as trivial as power levels or forms. He was seeing, clear as day, the rhythm of the fight. Whis also realized this and asked Braille if he could understand where this fight was headed. Well, Braille already was mesmerized and punching the air a little, as if watching, but not watching, more like feeling the fight with his very body. Okay, Braille, I want you to spar with me, and if you force me to block once, you can go join that fight, Whis says. So Braille starts sparring with Whis naturally going up to Super Saiyan, then Legendary, getting closer and closer to Whis's level. When this would happen, Whis would naturally take his movements a step further. You must see the rhythm of the fight, Braille. Not perceived limits, or stamina, or forms. Focus, Braille. The battle rhythm. You must see it. The flow of the fight, Whis says. Meanwhile, Vegito couldn't even feel his body anymore, and his mind was solely focused on the rhythm of the fight. It was as if he'd been blind until now, or as if, on the other hand, he felt not a hand punching, but hundreds of billions of cells working harmoniously and following some unknown, predetermined path of trajectory. However, that's not to belittle the strength and effort of each punch because they all rippled the entire dimension and the pace was slowly shifting in his favor. But the rhythm seemed endless as if he could transcend his physical body and thought that this might be similar to being reborn or something if he had to describe it. So you can see the rhythm of the fight, huh? Omega said. Now this isn't just some technique that can be acquired. So why? Why was it visible to Vegito? Did he say rhythm of the fight? Beerus exclaims in surprise. Uh, I've heard of it, but never... Beerus-sama, please get ready for battle. Something terrible is about to manifest here, Whis says, while still dodging Braille's now faster than light speed attacks. Cell has now heard from Longel what the voices may be, and is a little jaw-dropped. Then Vados says, Champa-sama, please follow my lead and prepare for the worst. Alright guys, that's the part. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you want to get notifications for my what ifs when I upload them, hit that notification bell. And I just want to thank you guys for your continued support. I love your comments. Please feel free to comment and let me know what you think. Let me know what I can do for future what ifs. Let me know what you think is going to happen in the next part. Or just let me know what the heck you did today. Anything's cool for me. Just let me hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, guys, my next what if, I'll tell you right now, it's going to be what if Bulma found Goku first. I think that's part 9 too. All my what ifs are coming up to part 9 now. That's great. And it's going to be insane. So look forward to that. Can't wait to see you guys there. Peace.